What's going on guys, it's Travis. Welcome back to another Hero's Journey. In this one we are diving in to two monitors and we're having a little bit of a battle here. We have the Dell 2723QE versus the Dell 2720Q. Now these monitors are very similar whereas the one on our right the 2720 aka 2020 came out on January 1st 2020 the one on the left came out in March 2022 so essentially the one on our left with the silver bottom is the new version of the one on the right now just to start it off as you can see with the lovely Mac studio we have right here um, the one on the left, it, it fits a lot better. We're having a lot more fun with uh, the color um, matching, etc. And the one on the right, it is not as fun. Not as fun because we're not matching that color perfectly. That silver. The classic's back. So with the classic being back, um, I initially thought, you know, save a few bucks let's uh let's get this older model but when i have them here on the table all nicely laid out obviously the one on the left looks a lot better now it kind of sucks to be you know picky in that regard but the newer version the 27 q 2723 q it's a little more sexier, a little more sexier. The poor 2720 is kind of, uh, it's unfortunately seems to be a little bit stuck in the past here. Um, this uh, look to me kind of seems like it's, you know, out of the 1990s. Uh, this base is kind of nice, but again, it's, and we'll show the back here in a little bit. Um, it's not as it's not as cool it's not as hip as this one on the left the newer version now a few um because these are kind of competitors and the newer version is essentially um you know it's the newer version the older version let's see if we can pick it up on my camera here unfortunately has a stuck pixel it's to the top right over there you can't really see it from where I'm at but oh it's there now I bought the one on the right new open box and I was a little skeptical because I don't, I don't really buy electronics refurbished open box etc but I took a chance because this actually is a second display to the studio display which i don't know when i'm ever going to get but the the my goal was to basically have a second display with the studio display and try that 227 um life so that is the goal here and i initially was very stoked on this one but 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 um this stuck pixel to the top right let's see here can we see it can't see it if we take the brightness down you can kind of see it I'm gonna do that right now now we have the brightness down I'm on a tripod, I don't want to move. Oh, the, this focus wants to pick it up. I was manually focusing, now I'm auto focusing, less manual. And let's get this in focus. There we go. I might crop in here and see if we can see it, but I got some good pictures of it yesterday, and it's there. It's there. So don't you worry about that. Um, they're both very nice looking. Um, but I straight up, I, I like the one on the left more. Now, there's a few other things that make this an easy decision. Now,
Hmm, doesn't want to do that. There's a little hack where you can make the brightness go up and down because you kind of can't do that. Uh oh. Where, uh, where, oh, there we go. Oh, we did it. Oh, so whatever, whatever the arrow of the mouse is will make that the app work to make the brightness go up and down. You can't do that on these monitors without a third party app. I think this is called Monitor Light. But, um, Let me hop in the shot for a second. So, <clears throat> and I'm not very well lit. Let's uh, bring this. Well, the problem is we're trying to film monitors. And when you film monitors, uh, the light is reacting off them a bunch. So I'm going to be out of focus right now. But the monitor, uh, let's get me in focus, see what happens here. There we go. So the monitors. These are great, but there's a clear winner, and there's a few reasons why there's a clear winner. Now, those reasons are, I'll show you right now. So let's see if we can, let's see if you guys can pick this up too. So, right now they're, they're, they're both at their max brightness. So let's, let's dive in there again. So, take a little gander here. And we're just really sh running and gunning this thing. Now these are both at their at their brightest. So, do you notice one being brighter than the other? Because one actually is. It is the one on the left. So the one on the left goes up to 400 nits. The one on the right, it only goes up to 350. I know it's pretty lame. Um, a lot of Apple monitors go up to 600, 800, 1,000. A lot of other non-Apple monitors usually cap out at 300, 350. So it really isn't that crazy that these are at those numbers. But the fact that the one on the left, the 23Q, um, it has the upper advantage here because it gets a little brighter. So let's just take one more little dive in here. You can see. You can see, especially on the bottom left, and then over here, I mean, it's, it's comparing like an orange to an orange, but one's just slightly more ripe. But it's pretty noticeable, especially during the daylight. And I was noticing, even when I had my, the one on the right, the older model, the 27Q, or sorry, the uh, yeah, the the 20Q. When I had it maxed out in brightness, it still wouldn't be bright enough. The one on the left, the 23, this one, it it would get bright enough. It actually, I would actually have to go down one or two. Um, I have a lot of windows behind me right now where I my little workstation's at, and and I I like to have a lot of bright light in the room when I'm working. I don't really like to work in a dark cave. I kind of like to have views and be able to look out the window and stuff. So I don't, I usually have a lot of light filling in the room. Right now it's nighttime, but um, even on my MacBook computer, the 2019 Intel, even at its max bright was, is kind of having trouble in this particular room because it, it gets, I'm shooting against, you know, th those are windows right there. So when those are open, there's basically a bunch of light filling in behind the monitors coming onto me and basically like silhouetting them. It's really, it's kind of the most like worst case scenario, really. I mean, it'd be better if I kind of moved them to the wall, that wall or the other wall, maybe even turn them around. That way it wouldn't be that great either. But this way it's more so it's because the light's hitting my eyes and I'm having to, to deal with the glare of the light and then look at the monitors, which are kind of getting hit from their behind by all that light too. And how, how these IPS monitors kind of work is they basically light is shining behind them. So the more light behind them, the kind of, the more washed out I can get. And that's where the next um, big point why the one on the left, excuse me, I think looks better than the one on the right is because it has increased contrast. Let's also get a get us some some uh, video playing to kind of see this. So 
the one on the left, it actually has, this is gonna be a very raw, raw, cut, uncut, deep dive. The one on the left here, this could work good. Uh, could it? I guess we'll see. The one on the left here, it, um, it has 2,000 to one. Here, I'm gonna stick my head in here. It has 2,000 to one contrast. The other one, the loser old model, only has 1,000 to one contrast ratio. That's pretty normal with these monitors. So this is actually a new technology on the left. It's called IPS Black. It's all the rage. It's brand new. This is the first monitor on the left here to feature that. So that's pretty cool because um, these monitors, the IPS, are kind of notorious for basically not having the best blacks. And that's why you would get an OLED screen or even a retina mat on a Mac, a retina screen. The blacks are a lot better than one of these computer, one of these monitors. And the problem with a lot of times is when you try to buy a, a monitor to accompany a MacBook or an iMac or Studio Display or whatever, it just never looks as, as good because you can't get those rich blacks. Now, when I initially looked at this screen, I was like, "Oh, it's pretty great." I got that screen first, the loser old model. When I looked at that screen, I really wasn't that impressed. I was like, all right, this looks good. It's the 4K is great. Let's get some of that going here. But the the contrast, it just it wasn't really that great. You know, it wasn't nothing to write home about. So let's get some YouTubes going here. Now I'm gonna try to get something non-copyright. Let's look at non-copyright 4K colorful. See what happens. Here we go, UK, uh, stock footage free, UK, colors of nature. Here we go, colors of nature. So we'll get these full screen, and I have both of these also. These are both at their full 4K scales. So these are both scaled to 4K. Um, I think 1440 might be the best way to use these when you're using them with like a 5K Mac or even just however it is. I'm not gonna go too much into scaling in this, but it is kind of a shit show. Um, but if you're just going to watch like a big screen YouTube video, having a 4K is pretty great. Or having it at the aspect ratio of proper 4K on these is great. So let's uh, get that going. We're going to double this. How do you double this? Let me just go. Boom. Here we go. Boom. Copy. Paste, boom. We'll drag this over here. Here we go. We're gonna start from the beginning. Oh, hold your horses, hold your horses. And that's playing, that's playing. All right. Full screen these bad boys. All right. Now we can, we can dive into this and really see what's going on here. All right, and the one on the left, for some reason, is uh, jarringly not playing good. So the test is a failure. Good job. And uh, yeah, this is kind of blown out because I need to take my exposure down. Okay, let's go right there. So let's just take a gander here because you can kind of see there's a little bit of a difference here. Um, look at the sky on the left. I'm going to move this camera a teeny bit over. Okay, you, you can kind of see how the newer model of this, oh, this guy's shredding. It has supposedly these deeper blacks. Now, it's a little hard to see, but you can see it you can see how even the color is a little different. Now I, I have, you know, just normal colors on. I have night mode off and, you know, the normal color going on here. But you can see how, I mean, I think the left looks better. Um, it's 
pretty difficult to really see, but there actually is a difference that I'm seeing. That's pretty noticeable. Well, that even has a slightly different color. Hmm, that's interesting. That's very different. Those two are very different. I'm going to move the one monitor to the right a little bit. Oh. And by the way, the, the cables, the USB, the Thunderbolt cables they give you with these things are so freaking short. It's pretty hilarious. It's, um, and this is basically a, we'll, we'll call this a live stream because I'm, I'm not going to edit this. This is straight shooting from the hip. But, um, there's a little bit of light bleed on the, on each screen. What's that? Is that from this? What is that from? Oh, it is from this. It's from something else. Oh, it might be from the candle. Uh-oh. This whole thing's getting ruined. Let's, um... Yeah, whatever. The lighting in here, um, that looks very different. That looks very different. And you know what's funny is... I, at first, was pretty convinced that the the newer version looked better but now I'm starting to be like uh, I don't know actually I'm gonna move this candle we're gonna up the ante a little bit we're gonna move this candle we're gonna shut this back this light behind off it's probably causing some light bleeding here but I, it's pretty dark without this but let's we'll just see let's get let's go in this hard here let's uh let's really get after it here All right, now we're talking. Now we are talking. Look at that. Look at that. That is different looking. That is different looking right there. The the color is a, is a bit different. You know? The um and this is this is live, guys. I'm, I'm learning this the same time y'all are. The color is definitely a bit different. Some people are saying that the new version is a little more yellow. Let's get back on track here, though, because a few of these key features, I think, really set this new model apart because get this more in track here five where's the mouse five let's try to get five let's pause a little quicker 513 well, there we go it's pretty much right on the money so I'm, I'm gonna straight up recommend the new version just because I think even on the on the main screen saver, the the blacks were a lot darker and the shades of blacks were a lot better looking. You you could tell there was more basically just more more depth to the black, more ink. Um, here it's. There actually is a slight color shifting of kind of more warmth on the older model, the 20, the 2720 on the right. And the numbers, how they name these, these Dell monitors. And by the way, these are the ultra sharp Dell monitors. Um, so there were the kind of the cream of the crop besides the P ultra sharps, which are more so for in the field or more so just extremely accurate color grading. Um, these are the best you're going to get if you're not going to jump up double, triple the price. And they're not as, I would say, in the field or 
really as necessary unless you're like straight up color grading you really need it to be the most accurate possible but it's funny because the exposure I'm shooting all this manually and the exposure changes based on the scene so I'm gonna try to keep keep this in line here but like there is something definitely going on with the color I'm gonna move the one to the left a teeny bit too I just kind of pushed something and it scared me that I was going to break it. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into the, the, the build quality and the actual other things going on here. These stands are slightly different. And, and actually, I will jump in for a sec because a lot of my researching was, are the stands going to be wobbly? And the, the matter of fact is they are a teeny bit wobbly. They are pretty much the same. I'll give a quick shake. They pretty much each are, they're fairly good. Um, this is a standing desk, so when I have it raised to the top, they are a little more shaky, but they're not as wobbly as, as wobbly can get. It's really in the end, I think this desk isn't the most stable. It's pretty stable, it's at the lowest right now, but what the hell is that? Huh, so there's no volume, now the volume came up, but Oh God, are we even in 4K? Oh, we are, thank God. Okay. We're in 4K. Yep. Make sure we're in 4K on this one. Yep. That would have been stupid. But, so so the shake wobble factor, I think either of these are pretty similar. Um, it's not going to be not moving at all. If you touch it, it's going to do a teeny wobble. Also, one other thing, this newer version it seems to be a little less creaky. This older version, it's kind of creaky. You can, it's a little, it feels a little cheaper. Um, I couldn't determine if the 2723 does have a metal stand. Some people say it does, some say it doesn't. I still don't know. It has a metal plate under the stand, but so does the older version. But, and it, the stand seems a little more robust, but in real world use, in real world use here, they're both pretty similar. They both have the same kind of quirks to them. And, and in the end, they're both the same. I mean, they're going to be a teeny bit wobbly, but nothing horrible. And compared to the other stands on the market, besides probably like the Apple, <laughs> studio stands, they're probably just as good or bad as the other stands, but I wouldn't say they're worse than, you know, say the LG Ultrafine 5K, which supposedly is, is horrible for the wobbles. But this, this is just a general overview of the colors we're getting and kind of the form factor, because you also can see is, is the bezels here. They are similar, but you have a Dell logo at the bottom of the older version there is no dull logo on the bottom of this version it's on the stand so that's kind of nice because you can even have it so low or even when you have this the monitor is vertical you can block the logo and when you're doing that it almost just looks like you're using an apple an apple product and just being such an apple fanboy it's it's funny because it I'm scared to venture out because you're just trying to replicate the Apple products. <laughs> and, you know, half the time, most stuff's just kind of crappy. It's not that great. With Apple, you know you're going to get a, a good product that's made of good materials and is going to last. And you know with Apple Care, like you're set. So there's just some comfort with the brand. So with other brands, it's always just kind of a gamble until you're a little customer, you just know how the brand works. But in the end, it's, you know, they're not that noticeable. And it's funny because there are, there is a slightly different color shifting going on. Whereas the 
Yeah, the one on the right is a teeny bit warmer, oranger, and the one on the left, the new model, is a little bit bluer. And I double checked that. Let me just double check again on the night mode. No, it's not on because it, you would be able to tell. Yeah, it's not on. Okay. It's funny because <laughs> I'm not really too picky with, with this kind of stuff, especially because I, I'll rock like the furthest warmth night mode pretty much at all times. <laughs> like I'm almost kind of ridiculous with my night mode. It's, it looks horribly, the screen always looks pretty shitty because I have night mode just like cranked. But I figure I'm looking at the computer so much. Oh, look at this. This is super noticeable. That looks, yeah, that's, there's something going on here. That is completely different color. Huh, interesting. Very interesting because I was only noticing color shifting in, in the the darks of like black and maybe dark gray and maybe some white, but this, I mean, it looks like a totally different color balance going on here. So yeah, um, in the end, if, if these aren't, the pricing on these is so similar too. I mean, I got the one on the right, the older version, open box new, and it was, I don't know, 400 bucks, but with tax and all that, I was 480. The one on the left was 650, brand new. So, you know, I tried to not buy it nice, so I basically had to buy it twice. So I basically had to buy the one on the right twice. I mean, not really, but it just kind of goes to show. Now look at this, this is super noticeable. The one on the right is for sure more orange. Hmm, interesting. I'm, I'm pretty sold myself, so this test really isn't gonna change my mind, but I don't mind how the one on the right, the, uh, the older version is looking. It is a little more saturated maybe, but it's kind of in the, in the greens more so than other colors and in the highlights. But the, the newer version of this Dell Ultra Sharp series, the one on the left, the uh, 2723QE, it is the first monitor to have this new quote unquote IPS black technology, which has the higher contrast ratio and it's just claiming to have the, the inkiest, darkest of blacks, which um, LG actually created so it's kind of like a little collab here, and I'm sure the next LG, you know, big deal will have. Oh, there's some uh, stuttering going on here because they didn't use the right SD card for their drone. That happened to me before. That's horrible. They need to take, they need to fast forward this part. But overall, I mean, both these are pretty great. I mean, if you're looking for like a studio display um, replacement, I think you can't go wrong with either of these. Now again, I'm a little butthurt because this, uh, look at that, you can tell there. I wonder what's going on here, why it's pretty different. Hmm. I don't know, comment down below if you can tell too or what do you kind of prefer. But I'm a little upset because the one on the right, it, you know, it showed up with one, uh, it's called a stuck pixel where basically it's a little pixel that doesn't go away. It seems to be green. It's kind of turning white, which probably isn't good. That means it's it's permanent. Sometimes when it's a color green, blue or red, because essentially it's you know a bunch of colors making up this and they blend together to make the, the actual picture. But sometimes they get confused and get stuck. And it's even just like a part of a pixel or, or a little percentage of a pixel, but it's already gotten under my skin enough where I'm like, ah, eh, screw this. And it's a brand new device, so I can 
you know, if something happens after a few weeks or something, that is is what it is. But when it's brand new and you open it and there's already a defect, uh, you know, it's hard to swallow that pill. Especially when it was my first quote-unquote open box, not refurbished, but in that realm where I usually just buy electronics new because I think stuff like that happens. And, you know, kind of learned my lesson. A few other design tips or design like differences here. So this has a bigger brighter light in the older version the newer versions light is a little more subtle that's kind of nice the menu on these as well the 27 23 has a little joist uh, like a little circular joystick thing on the back and like a button on the back which is kind of nice the older model the 2720 q it has like kind of these like rigidy little buttons right underneath here right underneath the um it's up this size so right underneath the thing the bezel and they kind of suck i mean they're a little it, it feels like you're using like a thing from 2008 or something so it's not really the best the the one on the left definitely feels more futuristic and like a more of a premium new age product the older version it just feels a little older feels a little more, um, I don't want to say 1990s, just more like 2000s. And yeah, so I think with the, a couple things the newer model has going for it is it's only, I mean, brand new, the 2020Q, uh, the one on the our right, brand new, it's still seven, 800 bucks. The one on the left, the new one's only like $100 more. It's eight, eight, 900. So you're not really saving that much and you're getting a couple pretty cool things. I think you're getting a better style, especially with the Mac. You know, if you want to go with that Mac life, you have all these cool silvery white Mac things, especially if you have the Mac studio, which I am very lucky enough to have right there. That looks nice. That Mac studio though, next to that thing, eh, looks okay I thought it was gonna look better but the bottom of this Dell it's kind of a space gray but it's like a Dell space gray and it's it's not that it's not that great I'm, I'm not even like that into Dell my like, god oh, Dell they kind of suck but a deep dive is saying that their monitors are pretty great and you know just because I have to get a I can't buy two <laughs> studio displays and I like to have it to go vertical that's kind of a new thing I want to try so studio display can't go vertical. Let's get the VESA, a VESA mount for it. Put this whole rigmarole, we gotta order it with the VESA mount and I'm adapting to standing desks now and I'm nervous about putting something on the standing desk. It's it just, to me, it seems like it's gonna wiggle. There's no way around it. So I'm experimenting first with just having them on the standing desks. But um, yeah, this has been kind of a fun like rambly live stream podcast. But I kind of just wanted to have these, you know, side by side, let everyone kind of see. And I'm actually kind of blown away because I didn't think they would look this different. I thought the one on the left, the newer version, would just straight up look brighter. And the older version would kind of look darker. But they actually have similar brightness, it seems. I'm not really noticing the one on the right being you know too much uh, too much brighter too much darker there's that like look at that like that sky that is noticeably different that's very interesting let's um let's so, and and also these are both at 100 percent brightness and 75 percent contrast so i wonder look at that that's different hmm interesting Hmm, that's very interesting. Look at that. That's different. That grass is like kind of more paley. That grass is... Uh, now I'm starting to get scared that I like the one on the right more. <laughs> nah, but it has that stuck pixel. I can't live with that. And actually, the, the older version, it... It seems like a teeny bit more saturated in a way where it like say the 
you know, S Cine tone is a little more pale and less saturated than picture profile off on the A7S III here. And when you kind of quickly glance, you might like the, the no picture profile and a little bit of extra saturation. But after a while and after editing and after actually using it, the more neutral actually is a little better because you can add some saturation or it's just probably a more accurate image coming out of the of the camera. So this could be a similar thing where it's a more accurate image with a little less saturation. It's beautiful though. This is definitely the first time I've shot two monitors next to each other <laughs> for a while. We're going to show the backs of the uh, monitors too. But yeah guys, this was um, basically the test here. I might even just quickly go up here and move these monitors around. That's kind of beautiful. Let's get some close-ups here. So, oh, let's see the little, one of those sheep. You know, remember those are bunnies? What are those things? Oh no, there's some over there and then, whoa. That's different. What the? That's very different. What in the tarnation is going on here? I'm confused. Let me let me jump in these settings and do something real quick. Cause oh there we go. Yeah. Perfect. We're on live TV. We're on live. But let me just do something here because see, you can go behind here, you tap this, it's very nice. Brightness control. We're gonna go here up. Oh. We're going to go to 100 for contrast. Maybe I'll do something. Uh-oh, now they look the same. I didn't have this on 100% contrast, though. So let's see here. As so you can see, this menu, you have to touch under here, and it doesn't have the little joystick thingy. So it kind of sucks. They don't even know how to do this. Uh, X. Um. Oh, wow, this sucks. Yeah. Standard. Uh oh, hopefully that wasn't standard. Oh god. Uh oh. Oh man, this menu sucks. You gotta like hit these old buttons. Alright, get me out of here. I, I was able I was able to find the contrast at one point. Oh X. Wow. I didn't realize how much that new menu system is really great. This thing's like using a a7 III menu. It's garbage. Oh, here we go. So, um, select. Oh, see, it's creaking. It's like a creaky little... That's just a more premium, newer model, which it's just... They've kind of fixed a couple of things, I think, just in the build quality. Uh, down. Yep, oh, here we go. All right, crank that. All right, so now we're actually at 100% contrast and 100% um, brightness. And just to confirm this, uh, we we're gonna double check that this color was the same. Are you freaking, this is a really, really annoying. Uh, down. No, oh God. Boom. Wow, this sucks. Oh, well, they both kind of jammed or something. We'll let it chill there for a sec and kind of check out the two images. I'm just trying to make sure these uh, colors are the same. There we go. Down. Input source color standard RGB. Y69 sharpness 15 smart off. Okay. All right. Let's see that one. So this is nice. You just go behind here. Tap this little like wheel dial thing. You click it again. Oh yeah. Oh my god, so much better. Yeah, standard. That's what we're at. Um presets. These are all the same. Color, standard RGB. 50, 69, yeah, all right, we didn't blow it. They're all the same. 
All right, we're good. So, yeah, this is just straight up. Um, uh, how do you uh, go back though? Maybe this button? Up? Oh, nope. So these are these. Are, the test was a success in terms of I had the stuff set up correctly. Um, uh -oh, I don't know what I just did there, but there's a definite difference that I did not. Four C here. Let's try another one here. Let's go to free to use two hour drone looped. Twenty seven. Let's get this at the same time too. Twenty seven. All right, here we go. Fun. We're having fun, right? It's all about fun. All right. So, basically we just upped the contrast to 100. It was at 75%. Let's see if that does anything. I mean, there's, it's definitely different. It's, uh, this, is, this test was uh, pretty crazy because... Hmm, this is very interesting. Yeah, the one, yeah, the older model definitely is a little warmer. Look at this. Look at that water. That water is different looking. Huh. Ooh, actually, you know what? Now I'm more stoked on the new one. Look at the look at the 2020 old loser model. It's actually I'm realizing it it is a little saturated, but not even in like a it's almost like a vibrant saturation, not really a saturation, it's just like a little more vibrant. Which usually is nice, but sometimes, I mean, you don't really want that just straight up. Like, straight up, you know? So, I mean, really, in the end, though, like, to be kind of lame, like, the form factor of the newer 23Q is just really nice. Like, I kind of wasn't that stoked on it, but this base is is very nice it's very sleek very nice i didn't think it looked would be this nice in person i was kind of like pretty drawn away from it i was more into this design initially i was like all right this looks like a, f a fatter base it looks like it'd be more stable and cooler in person this looked kind of skinny and like a losery base but now that they're here it's obvious the I mean, it, might, it might be the color as well the silver color, it's just like in the MacBook are just BFs. Whereas this one in the MacBook are kind of like, eh, I mean, we can chill, but we're not like besties. These guys were just, it's almost like they're made for each other, these two. Let's get a little look at the, um, at the backs of these, because the backs of these, <laughs> it's another funny aesthetic thing, do kind of make a, look at this though, look at that water, yeah. It's a little more, yeah, it's a little more warm, the older model. And I, I don't think, I think they're on the, I think everything's the same. So there must be something going on with the increased contrast and the deeper blacks and the higher brightness. Oh, you know what? I wonder if I made the, let me make the left one a little less bright because, because it naturally can get brighter. A couple notches, see how that looks. Hmm. Did that fix it? Maybe that fixed it. I don't know. Still looks a little different to me. I don't know, what do y'all think? What's what's uh what's the dilly here? I'm baffled. 
And you know what? It kind of looks a little more different. Maybe maybe just because it can get a little more brighter. Oh no, look at that. That water, that water still is more tur turquoisey. They both look very nice. I think the image on the left, the newer model of this Ultra Sharp, is more neutral. Some people said it was more yellow. I wonder if... But no, I think the older model is more yellow. It seems to be more warm to me. Which in, in general is more orangey yellow and cooler would be more blue. So on, on the left, the newer model is more blue. Let's, all right, I'm gonna flip these around so you can take a look at the, the backs of these without stopping the camera. Let's up this uh, exposure, look at that. Look at this nice, lovely standing desk. All right, flip these around. Because you're gonna see Wow, this one's a lot more pretty than this old school one. Now, this cable is so freaking short that I can barely do this. It's like, come on, dude. <laughs> Why are you giving us a, a three foot freaking cable? <laughs> All right, that, that's as far as it can go <laughs> without having to do this whole freaking stuff. Like, look at that. Like, which of these do you prefer? Oh, it's kind of cockeyed, but like the slick looking silver or this straight up, like, 1999 looking thing. And I initially thought this was cool. So I was like, oh, like a cool kind of flatter, like that circle I like more than that for the cable management. And also, do you like how I'm not even using the cable management? Um, yep. Because of the standing desk, I'm still nervous when it goes up and down. That's going to like rip something off and kill it. So the more leverage of wire a cable can have, the better. So I'm kind of scared to put it through there because then it kind of kind of gets stuck in there. It can like rip out, you know, either rip off the monitor or rip out the cable. So, but I mean, in this camera, the one on the right, the older version does look kind of cool. But in person, it's, it looks a little, a little old school. And not in a good way. Whereas the new version, you're like, oh yeah, baby. Silver time, Mac Studio, MacBook. Look, a MacBook's over there somewhere too. Oh, the chair's blocking it. But if you're living Mac life, you're like, yeah, Mac life, bro. And then you're like, ah, what is this thing? What is this, 1998? So, well, all right, guys. And I'll give you a quick demonstration too of how they uh, kind of go up and down and, and they both pretty much go up and down the same, but the the silver version, I think, actually goes up a little higher, and it seems to be a little more easier to manage, whereas the older, old school version, sometimes you gotta like feel like you're gonna break it moving it. So, do a quick demonstration on that. See, that moves pretty easily. Just didn't even mean to do that. What is this stuck on? See, these cables are already scaring me. Do this. All right, so watch. Oh, that's not good. Maybe I should be using the cable management. So, you can kind of, this is very smooth. It goes up and down. See, the down's kind of tricky. Maybe shut the, shut these off too. <clears throat> Hit their lowest. See, it's, this one's tricky. Like, I feel like you're gonna break it. They both go pretty much the same, but actually the newer one goes a little bit lower. A teeny bit lower, I'd say. 
yeah, it does goes about an inch lower and slides up a lot easier with that newer stand. This little one, like I used the same force here, it didn't want to move. I gotta like really pull it up. And as we can see here, the newer one actually goes a teeny bit higher. Maybe like the teeniest of teeny. Oh, they're pretty much the same. But then here is kind of cool. So they can both go vertical. So you got to tilt it back like this. Like this. And when you do this, oh God, it's kind of scary. And this can go down. And these, these can basically touch the, when you go like that, they can touch the, the thing that it's sitting on. So it's kind of cool. Like this is a cool setup and I might even try this setup when the Mac uh, studio display, if it ever gets here. I'll do the same on this. This cord has kind of gotten a little, maybe that's why I use them. <laughs> so same thing, you want to tilt it back before you go for the, well, it's already tilted back. And you can also tilt, you know, I think in the end, the old stand is maybe a smidgen more sturdy, but it's also a little more creaky and it's more sturdy because it's kind of like this creaky, like get stuck thing where this is a lot more smoother and it's almost the tiny smidgen you lose. It's not even a big deal because it's, it's so much smoother and experience when you do want to move it around. So let's do this. See, something's going on here. I'm scared. There we go. Okay. So I'll do this down too. See, it can, yeah, it can basically, it, you, could sl you could slam it by accident. So now they're both chilling in their vertical modes. Let's see. You know what? Oh, interesting. Almost seems like the older one, the older model wants to get a little more, I don't know, they're pretty much the same, but it, this is pretty cool. And um, we can kind of look at them, you know, when, when they're off too, they look pretty similar, but you know, you can't even see the base here, so. You know, you get you can get the old one, and if you had a vertical, you wouldn't even know what color the stand was or anything. So, I think in the end, in conclusion, these are both great great offers for a Mac Studio. You know, right there for a little buddy, so you can work, or just any any monitor you need. Um, my next my next uh, dilemma is if I do have a vertical like this, is it too tall? So. If I'm standing, and let's let's get this let's give this standing desk a little show. So make sure everything's plugged in. Now, okay. Now this is always a little scary. Let's see, it's going up. Now, if those cables are in the in those little sockets are supposed to go, and it's a little scary because you know what if. See, look, the thing is already, look, it's already like being sketch. I don't like it. So the, the goal would be to, to stand desk and have one of these, but it's pretty tall. I mean, let's do a quick test here. So if, say I had it, you know, uh -oh, what is that? I'm trying to return this one so I can't get too crazy with it. So, you know, if we had this guy right here, oh, you know, I'm not going to do this because, oh, maybe I could. And then, you know, this guy. Oh, 
this it's so much smoother this one when you do this stuff you know if we want with this little maneuver you know is this is this doable or is the 27 too big to pull this off because this this could be a cool little setup so this, this could be one of the go-to's that actually looks pretty cool because I was debating just getting a 24 for the side one but when I edit with these both vertical then one would be 24 one would be 27 and then when you also have like the the 4k and the 5k once you go lower than 27 or 32 it kind of creates some hassle and trying to match the 5k max is already a big pain in the ass so you you don't want to go too crazy um but that looks pretty cool i mean that's a cool setup but ergonomically speaking here you know your neck goes a little you know what though it's not bad because this would be pretty much that high you could bring this in some get this light on again I mean, that's a pretty cool setup. Because when you're editing your TikToks and your Instagram Reels, etc., it's nice to have it go vertical. Oh, it's not too shabby. You know, eye level. So this is a little higher, but. 24 would only be a little bit less, and 24 could be cool, but then once you go this way, it kind of sucks. So, I mean, it's not horrible. You could even, you know, kind of block that off and just plan not to use that area. Because you, you anyway, you have to kind of put your neck down to look at it. So, because really you want your eye level to the top, maybe a little down. But that's pretty cool. So I, I could just keep them both, but I'm, I'm spending, too, you know, there's too many, too much money going into too many gadgets right now. And I gotta, I gotta behave. So, but that, I can get used to that right there. <laughs> just replace the, that Dell on the left of the studio display, make the one on the right, the one on the left. We're in business. All right, guys. Well, Thanks for joining me on my hour-long deep dive into the these two Dell UltraSharp 27-inch monitors. Again, we have the on the right. We have the came out in uh, 2020 Dell UltraSharp uh, U2720Q, and this newer model, which is essentially the newer version the Dell 2723QE. I'm not sure what the E stands for, but I know there's a QM for this too, and that just means it comes with a different, comes with the HDMI, which I kind of would prefer. These come with display ports, which is nice, but I would not mind an extra HDMI right now, especially because right now I, I, this doesn't, the studio display doesn't, or the Mac Studio doesn't come with the HDMI, so that's lame. Or it doesn't come with display port, it comes with HDMI. So I'm like, come on, bro. But all right, guys, that's it for uh, another episode of Hero's Journey, this tech edition, some monitor battling. Hope everyone has a good one. Peace.